I'll set it. All right, we're going to call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any uh, changes or additions? Yes, could uh, we have a plan for lease lands? And I recommend that we move the summer recreation program underneath the map. It's part of that budget of I'm sorry, oh, so, summer that. recreation? Yes, summer recreation. That's my condition. Yes, please. Okay. It's, it's in the general government budget, but I'd like to okay. break it out and uh, put it up with Mac and okay. uh, the cemeteries. We'll Great. Anything else? Uh, next on the agenda, approve the minutes of November 13th, 2019. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next on the agenda, approve the minutes of November 18th, 2019. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next, community concerns. I got a couple. Oh, wait, go ahead. One for Dan. That's not a concern. I haven't heard anything. I'd like to know what's going on. What, what is the analysis of this call for data on the guilt road? Um, we actually had an engineer who I respected, and he couldn't find any problems with that call. I didn't mind it. But okay, that's not that. I heard enough. I'll go my way. Um, We're happy to share that. Definitely blind, I tell you. We're happy to share the report. It was discussed at a previous I, meeting. I know more about that call than other people do, okay? I live on that road. I'm working on that road. Number two, I want to ask the select board, what's going on with this sidewalk machine? Broke down all the time. Is it back again or is it still down? It's still there. Um, they they were going to bring it back to us the week before Thanksgiving. Um, they did a test on it for two hours. Um, they found another problem with it. They were the parts. The parts came in today and they're hoping to get it fixed and back up here to us this week. You realize we spent $185,000 on a machine that's been broke down more than running? And it's supposed to last 20 years. Yeah, it will last 20 years. It's going to be in the shop 20 years. I'm not happy about it. My tax dollars. You're not alone. Yep. I'm thinking you guys got, got, the, got the shaft. Yes, Put sir. Put it back the year after and you never did. Well, it's on my, it was on my list tonight to bring it up to. I'm telling you. You could have bought four brand new skidsters. Four skidsters. Don't more, have money left over for More than that. that. More more than that. There. We could have bought the tool cats. We could have bought three of them, right? You you bought you bought yeah. a dead horse. And you might have bought, I told you. We were that. we were lied to, okay? You were misinformed. Because it I won't was say lied. misinformed because yeah. it's not lasting. I know it wasn't going to last, but looking at it, I saw it out here for animals. Yeah. I'm not going to okay. collaborate. So I can stop it. Do something. That you want the sidewalk done, or you want to have a machine in the shop all the time? And every time you go down, I'm going to take charge of you now, Dan, and fix this. Thing. Actually, it's still under warranty. It's under warranty. Yeah. It's like one of the house stoves. No, it's under warranty for the full term of lease, which is five years. You want a chance to send it back after the second year, right? Yes. Nothing they started having problems with it. And why didn't you, why didn't you just make the move and get rid of it? That's going to be brought up by me. Okay. Okay. I'm just not going to I've been looking at it. My tax dollars aren't going to go for it. So when I buy equipment, I know what I'm buying. Like I told you before. Yeah. When you go buy equipment, you got to have somebody go and know what their what equipment is. I want to make sure if we do get rid of it, they were not losing a lot of money by getting rid of it. Whether you know, I'm going to get a lot more. Well, I know. Better. That's what I'm afraid of, but it's uh, something I, I was going to discuss. That's one of my concerns, and I don't think I, I'm just it really pisses me off. Me too. I see that thing broke down on the side of the road, up. So, and a lot of other people are bringing it up. Well, getting a lot of complaints about the sidewalk, but if we haven't got a machine, they stink. Yeah. Okay. So, so I got that you Yeah. Thank you, Buckley. Thank you. Anything else? Any other community concerns? Hearing none, any liquor control, Sarah? Very good. Moving into uh, budget. First up is pleasant view. 
Yeah, you can join us up here. And Tina, if you could help guide us on where to put you know, some the of these. Are we in the back under miscellaneous tab? There'll be a PVC plus a cemetery tab. That's their entire budget. They're Thank asking you. the town just for the same appropriations last year, but this details what they're spending it on. Thank you. If you know, it's $7,200 under budget for last year. And if you notice that we're getting a bigger sum from our endowments, which you're in short for you asked us to do to keep our the maintenance of the cemetery going. And basically, it's wages. Do you have all the pages in front of you, Gloria? Pardon? Do you have all the pages in front of you or the overview? Because maybe we can go through page by page. Expenses, there's two expenses and one revenue. So if we start on the revenue and side. Then there's, uh, the, uh, it's on revenue, so any questions? What, what happens as you continue to draw down from here and down? If we can pass it in less. Yeah. It's getting less. We put it invested uh, with the edge zone um, with the uh, Rich Jacobs. Rich. Rich. Yeah. yeah. With Rich. And it's invested in, in such a way, and Tina and Paul are helpers with this, uh, that it, we look ahead, like in October, when are we going to start? We open up a cemetery, then we're going to have the money for wages, equipment, stuff like that. So it's invested in such a way that, that uh, it comes due when we need it, basically. But yeah, we're drawing that. How much are you drawing down a year? Is there a percentage? I think this one. What is Tina? What? What did you ask? Is there a percentage of, that we draw down from our investments? There's no percentage, is there? No, we normally just it's just we, whatever you need that the no, town doesn't like supply. In April, we, we need the money to come in. The wages are not coming in. Any other questions on the revenue side? Expenses? These were the, um, there were people here from the Cemetery Association, and they were talking about people coming in doing knowing and so on, and how is that all connected? Is, this, is it the same? No. Um, Two different entities. More <clears throat> than and they had some concerns because they tried tracing back on some uh, deeds. And I think what they're doing now is they, they want to do a, uh, they've got a grant to tie everything in together. Oh, I don't know anything so about grants. Sarah is here. They're, I'm here. <laughs> I don't, I'm not aware of a oh, grant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm working with them. We're researching programs to yeah. help with the yeah. maintenance of it, it has all the records with, with the, uh, the mapping. A number of years ago, Francis and Abel and I and Doug Churchill did all the cemeteries, and that's where we got the maps from. It hasn't been kept up well, particularly since Francis is gone. But to try in my faith, which I was for self along, and to get our money in a good manner, but also the, the deeds, you know, are they proper, have they been doing right? And so that's where we ended up, I think, with my opinion. They're, they're separate. They're separate. <laughs> so this is Pleasant View only. We're, yeah, we have our own maintenance staff. So Pleasant View and then Morristown and Sanitary is so separate. completely um, separate. We have a contract for the other cemetery, so yeah. basically. So 
looks like the major change is a purchase. We've gotten all the trees the last few years. Yeah. We spent quite a bit of money on trees, getting rid of them. Yeah. We'll, we'll always have. We'll always have trees and always right. remain all trees. Yeah. This spring. We've been off a lot. Um, where we, we, we uh, in the Congress tree, this spring has been the first hour of this And hopefully, John there you are, John has suggested that maybe a boy scout should have. Hmm. Like that, to up some of these trees and then have them set up. Can you bring up something, Laurie, on that? No. Where you took all the trees. <coughs> what? What? Yeah. Where you took all the trees. Where you took all the trees. I'm banking on the slope up there. We took them down because there were a lot of trees. I understand that. Yeah. But they needed to go that way. Yeah. But I can tell you, the trees grow faster than you can cut them. Those trees have grown up to 10 feet already. That's right. And, yeah. uh, and you're going to get mad, and the soft hawk would come in back yeah. in for the soft maple. We, we've talked with Corey, uh, we go to the tree, and, and if, if it doesn't work out with the uh, horse cups, then we'll be in the spring and, and take it. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to get rid of them. They're going to come back. Once you cut them, they're going to they're gonna yeah. seed, and seed right back in. Yeah. And you're going to get massive. While they're there, they're already they're massive. Big I've been looking at them right over there. Roundup. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I'm just saying you're going to have to ongoing maintenance problem there. Yeah. Unless you, unless you dig I'll, it. I'll call you in as a consultant. No that. All right. Okay. <laughs> Any questions for Gloria? Is there just one more up there? Is it you're replacing one, or do they have more than one more? Two more. Two more. So you just replace them one? Yeah. Or is this an addition um, we, to it? We, we, have, we have two we more, they're both running nice, but the replacement is going to be on one. Okay. okay. If you look under small equipment under expenses, there's a fly more amount more, and we want to buy it next year, and it's one of those for the banks. Hmm. For the banks, because they're pretty treacherous. Like the village had in years ago on the water mm -hmm. front hill. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it looks like you're you're just down, like you said, you're down seventy two hundred under that. It's pretty level across the board. Yes. Great. Any questions for Gloria? No. No. Thanks. That's it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We hope to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> Put him on the spot. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up, uh, library. Thing. We'll just go right through the revenue side first in case the board has any questions. Up just a little. Similar increase, looks like. Mm 
Any question? Jim? Jim? No. Very good. And then just the summary, so the last page here. Oops, not the last page, sorry. So the proposed budget includes a appropriation of $180,601 compared to $174,578 last year. Very good. Anything else you want to tell us? Um, no, uh, I guess what I would like to say is that in the building, Where is that reflected, Barbara? Because I don't see a huge increase in the payroll. Um, in the payroll, it went from 168 to 173. So is it just part, it some part time? Actual, yeah. Last year, that was one payroll less than normal. Yeah, because last year you had added. Did you add something it last year? It was like 25 pay period versus Got it. Okay. So okay. that's why it looks less. Got it. Um, Yeah, that was new. Yeah. 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 Trisha? <coughs> I have to say, I hear phenomenal things about our library. From the young, the old, and the in-between. More in the last two years, three years, than I have ever about their programming and what they offer for this community. I just want to say that it is definitely an asset, more than ever, I believe, for the community. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We're really lucky to have Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me how much you take from the endowment as far as um, the gains in the past year versus what you're actually taking out of the endowment? Are you eating into the principal at all when you take uh, from the endowment? Or yes, are you... we are. Okay. Last year, we earned um, I think I had 60, 60 or 6100 in dividends and income minus 12,000 I mean 61,000 minus 12,000 in fees so what we're taking out the 80 what are we proposing this year 80, 87 87 um, that's going into the uh, Who manages the endowment? Is that done through a Morgan Stevens? Okay. And we have very good relationships with them. Okay. Anything else? No. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Mac and Summer Rowe. Mac. Summer Rowe. You want to do them separately? Mac is just straight. I mean, okay. I don't know. Do you have any questions for Matt? This one, uh, it's you can see a budget. There. Yeah. It's a straight line. 7,000, if I recall. Hi. Any questions, Patricia? It's pretty straightforward. There's some great projects coming up in the next year. You'll see some more changes in the committee. Just put out a request for a large mural project inside of Green Dragon. Some more welcome signs. Thought this one's pretty easy. Very good. Anyway. <laughs> I appreciate all the work that you do and the, the ideas you come up with. Brilliant. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Any questions for Trisha? <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate Thank you and you. your modesty. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you did a phenomenal job, by the way. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mac. Uh, sorry, Summer. Jeez. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can compete with that. And this is also under general. Dan. No, this is under the ladies. Thank you. Thank you. And this is also under the ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. I have what I need. All right, so first is the revenue summary. The increase in um, anticipated revenue, is that from an increase in program fees or enrollment or combination? Both. Both. How much, are the, how much is enrollment going up? Um, enrollment's going to go up for the full summer, $50 per child, and then it's going to increase each child after that. We are still cheapest um, in Lamoille well County compared to even people in Morrisville with um, mask and stove. Yeah. We're trying to stay low to, let, to keep it affordable. Great. And are there um, subsidies available? We do not take subsidy. No subsidy. We're going to have an issue this summer. It's going to be, we had a grant amount given to us from the school. Mm -hmm. They're taking that back this summer, and they're going to distribute that, and they're going to take that over. And Got then it. Memorial Family Centers does, they do help us, but they can't guarantee what who's going to get what and how much work they're going to get. Okay. So. Do you see that negatively impacting you, the program? Not impacting the program. It's, we can't take the kids. Like, it stinks because we have parents who want to come and want their kids to come. But then I try to work with them as much with as we can ahead of time to take payments ahead of time and try to get them paid because we want to try to get everybody to come. But I can't let two families have that rate you know, all summer and all. Forty of my other families pay by day one, so that's kind of our hit or miss. We try to work with those families and try to get the Memorial Family Center involved. Last summer, I was able to contact DCF and I got DCF to cover some family costs. I was able to reach out and get some funding for them, even if they couldn't pay for the week. I was able to find some resources for them to come. So it just depends, case by case. You don't know how many kids will impact them. Or how many families? No. Sarah Wood has the numbers, I think, of how many kids got scholarships last year, but I don't know. Not in my brain. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know exactly how that's going to impact and what they're going to get, you know, how they're going to do their scholarships funding. Okay. Child care and, and scholarships and funding, it's an issue everywhere. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the revenue side? Expenses. Just so everybody knows too, I mean, we do try to keep a little bit of cushion 
for this program different because you never know from year to year how much kids are expenses. And plus, you know, I think we um, really stress the safety training with the counselors, which wasn't something that necessarily done in the past. And now we've got lifeguards, we've got water safety certification for people. So um, it's been some of those things I think that need to be changed in the program. So we, we keep a little cushion just to make sure that from a year to year basis that we've got those things covered before the program starts. So. And we've got more staff to kid ratio right. than most daycares. Yeah. And they're younger staff, but they're more trained. They either have CP, they all have CPR, first aid certification, and then they either have lifeguard certification or they have waterfront safety certification. So it's required or you don't work for me. Great, so the town appropriation is staying the same as last year's yes. budget request anyway. Great. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I just say once yes. again that we so appreciate the library, the support that the has in managing the Thank you. Thank you. The roads look great. The streets. Thanks, Margaret. Take care. Thank you. All right, moving on. Old business. Pickleball leave. Just an update. Yeah. You know, um, the next day after the meeting, she called her mom and Susan now just to make sure that we were clarified. Then we had a conference call with, with the underwriting department. For them to underwrite and ensure that the, it has to be something that's directly underneath the control of the town employee. I think that is very, very confusing um, for everybody, but they won't issue a certificate of insurance the way it was proposed. So they, they, they wanted, we even asked the question, what if it was a town point, you know, volunteer? And they said, no, they felt like that was just, you know, a workaround to do it. But it really needs to be, we just don't, right now, we don't currently have what Vermont Lakes and Cities and Towns is looking for, where we don't have a, an employee, Direct director or something. a director that's managing those types of programs. And we don't have anybody on staff that currently has you know, the time to really start <coughs> I just wanted to clarify that. You know, so the concept that the board approved at the last meeting really doesn't function the way our insurance provider wants it to. So um, I did talk back, and I don't think they're here tonight. But mm -hmm. you know, just to, to kind of convey to them that it's, it wasn't going to work with the way that we discussed it the last time. I don't know if the board had any questions on that or not. No, I think just in the future, as the town continues to grow, we may want to consider, you know, the rec. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty broken. new. Yeah. So, do you need a? Do we need a motion to undo that? No, you know, once again, if you as you propose it, it, just won't work. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, VLCT still won't write a certificate of insurance the way uh, if we ever have an employee that manages those types of recreation programs. Mm -hmm. And sure, we can go back and do something. But right now, we don't have that type of capacity in staff. Okay. And we're going to we're going to fund it. It was you know, funded no. by the members of the thing. They all made donations. I know that one, a big one in the Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted, um, they just wanted to be able to use a gym and walk it, and they wouldn't allow them to use it without a certificate of liability. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Okay. I don't know how they do it down there. Of course, they got more money. We got to sell them. Uh, and different uh, different places would have different requirements and uh, uh, liability. Yeah, they're much bigger town. Yeah, yeah, they have you know they have all those hockey rinks. I think are all owned by the town. All the mm -hmm. softball, you know, all those leagues. They they are sponsored by the town. Yeah, they're all owned by the town. So you know, they have the same type of rules that we have. Yeah. So it's just you know, you know they have the same type of rules that we have. Yeah. So you know, they have the same type of rules that we have. Yeah. Very good. New business. Discuss parking plan for village center apartments. We push that back. We do also have a gentleman here that's waiting for the brick lane. Uh, they're upstairs. Oh, so, with, um, uh, so you want that first under new business? Yes, please. Okay. Um, and the, the people that are discussing the parking plan are upstairs with the, um, the same council currently, too. So. We just said let them know, Pat, whenever you guys want them down, they're ready to go down whenever you want. 
do we have any definite here? Sorry. All right. So, quick claim B. This is the this is common lease lands. So it's the same thing that we've been going through with. Somebody's trying to buy a property, they find out that there's a lease hold on an old lease hold. Hopefully, this will be the last one of these that we see because after the first year, a statute takes over and they're automatically you know, gone anyway. So, this should be the last one. I'll make a motion to approve the quick claim deed. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'm surprised this wasn't the fifth I'm shocked when we come up when we bought the house four or five years ago. Yeah, this is the new thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the past five years. Had a lot of views. And it's just going to be completely, you know, minute after 1 1 2020 with the new legislative change. So it is a little frustrating that this was just brought up. But it is what it is. <laughs> the attorneys, I think, are paying more attention to it. There was the, the issue that they had in Colchester on these lands, I think. And there was another thing probably that came up with the police lands. And now you know, the title attorneys are paying a lot more attention to it. I think they have to the title attorneys. I think it was the, the mortgage provider who's actually yeah. had an issue with it. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Motion's carried. So you have to sign who to sign something? Um, the Todd Tom sees the agent okay. for Convey Real Estate. I can have him sign it tomorrow. His office is up in the building office. Sounds good. Thank you. Welcome. While we're, we'll jump to EMS, but Trisha, did you want to grab Todd? Yep. Okay. EMS roster update. Hi, good evening. Uh, I've actually got three separate items. Two of our, two are additions and one is a removal. Um, I'd like to add Lori Martin uh, to the part-time staff. That's the total spot that was approved previously uh, for the fifth part-time position. She's currently a volunteer member. Uh, she's hit the ground running and already uh, been covering some shifts. And uh, that would be the typical, not to exceed 23 hours uh, a week uh, at uh, 15, 15 hour. Do you, need, do you want the rest of them or do you want to do them individually? I would ask that, that we have to do individually. individually. Yeah. Uh, I think there's already a pre-draft induction yeah, I'm not so creative, but I can read here. So. <laughs> Move to hire Lori Martin as a permanent part-time EMS employee, working no more than 23 hours a week with no benefits. Effect is November 27th, 2019, with a rate of pay of $15.50 per hour. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, second addition, uh, Larkin Graves is a member of the uh, Mount Mansfield Ski Patrol who was a graduate of the EMT class that Diana and Sammy did at Morristown EMS earlier this year. Uh, and he's put in an application to join as a volunteer member. And we'd like to go ahead and make that edge to the roster. Larkin Graves. Yes, ma'am. I move we approve Larkin Graves to be a volunteer member of the EMS. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, uh, we have three, three. Uh, members that are currently on the roster uh, who have not been uh, uh, going back to our discussion on the part time position uh, that we are going, uh, going to ask for removal. That would be Zach Isham, uh, Ben Collier, and Brad Carrier. The other ones have been email. Have and okay. Yeah. Sorry. So Zach, Zach, Zach Isham. Yep. I S H A M. Yep. Uh, ben Collier. Yep. And Brad Carey. And like Dan said, there were some other people that were mentioned previously, and we've got uh, a recovery process going on for them. Do I have a motion to remove these three from the volunteer so roster? Move. Have a motion. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Sorry. <laughs> Motion's carried. Long day. Long day. Long day. That's fine. Oh. 
All right, we're going to actually, you guys, hold a little bit. we're going to jump to number three. Uh, so, uh, next on under new business, higher flight time, administrative assistant for the police department. Richard? Uh, Nancy Merrill is our current administrative assistant. She's retired after six and a half years. So, we do a search and we found Darlene Creighton, well qualified to take her place. We move to hire Darlene Crichton as a permanent part time administrative assistant for the police department, working no more than 20 hours a week with no benefits, effective December 3rd, 2019, with a rate of pay of $17.50 per hour. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next, uh, renewal appointment for the police department. Uh, Peter Hughes is been with us a little over a year. He's completed his probation. So this is what we normally do. We reappoint for the, the tenured officer. Uh, so that's one of the formality, basically, to have him appointed for the full time. Off probation. Completed probation. Very good. We make a motion that we appoint Peter Hughes to the permanent full time police officer. Second. Motion in the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next, reappointment promotion for the police department. This is our biggest step. This is the first time we've ever done this. Yep. So we've done it's come the time where we need patrol supervisors. So we went through the process, we had applicants, and we chose it. As you know, Bob Beeman was on the interview committee along with Dan and myself. And we've chosen Jason Muno and Garrett Christensen as their first ever control sergeants. And we'll be taking a look at their contract. Very good. We make a motion to appoint Garth Christensen as a sergeant for the Morristown Police Department, effective December 8, 2019, rate of pay determined by the police union bargaining contract. Second. If a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Should we get a round of applause or something? <laughs> we'll wait till they're both appointed. Yeah. <laughs> Here, uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. I move to appoint Jason Luno as a sergeant for the Morristown Police Department, effective December 8th, 2019, rate of pay determined by the police union bargaining contract. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Wait, the gentleman stand up. So, Congratulations. So, nope. <laughs> uh, hearing no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Again, congratulations. Thank you, Richard Jan, for taking care of that. All right, now back on to discuss the parking plan for Village Center Apartments. Cool. Can I just start this off? I just kind of frame it. Um, for this project, we've been putting around town staff for a little while, the whole house is not there. Um, on that street. Um, right now, for the by all, Currently, right now, and my major concern is the, the winter overnight parking. We currently have about 80 spaces, you know, on and off, which is an average of what we deserve. Um, this project, per the design for the zoning bylaw, I believe, if you me wrong, for the first 24 units. Mm -hmm. And at the 75% rate that's in the zoning bylaw, I know I'm not real numbers may be up down all around, but the zoning bylaw requires that that would require 18 parking spaces. Currently, right now, I ask you to figure. Um, like I said, we have about eight available. Um, 
the planter can come out now. That, that branch is dead and gone. So we picked around the original one, the rough one that I originally gave board members. Todd did up with his rough for us, the basis to work, work on. Tyler's done up something you know, that an engineer can do that we can't do on staff. It's much smoother and prettier. Um, that would increase the overnight parking, again, I think from 25 to 33. Something like that, the middle aisle is where the overnight parking was going to be. Yeah. Um, and then the size, but I think overall the parking would increase about 18 spots over there. Mm -hmm. This is the general discussion. I think you guys are ready to go in front of the PRB here soon. But it's, you know, needless to say that this project will create a strain on parking in the downtown. And I thought best for everybody to come from the select board, start a discussion about it, and see, you know, and hear from you guys um, about the parking. Because, you know, they, they will, I think, without a doubt, negatively impact the municipal parking lot. And I, I think it's you know, time to figure out how we want to do it. Um, one of the things that's on there, you know, this is kind of the, the bigger scheme for the parking lot. One of the things that I have concerns about that does not have to be done is I've looked at moving the parking, the parallel parking that's on Pleasant Street um, into the parking lot because I think if you talk to people that leave the Pleasant Street parking lot on a regular basis, there's a huge line of sight problem there mm -hmm. um, trying to get out. And, you know, I know employees that had accidents there. Um, that's not something that has to be done. Um, you know, at a minimum, to reconfigure the parking lot, the planner would need to come out and it would need to be repaved and restriped. I think trying just to go in and restrike it would be a disaster because the old paint doesn't come up and it, it just, you know, it, it needs to be repaved. The other thing that would be a part of this proposal that I think there's grant funding out there for that would help us do it would be some form of stormwater treatment while we're doing this project. But there is grant money available to do those kind of projects. That just kind of set the stage, Jim. I don't know if I, I think that's about everything I kind of discussed with you at a much larger yeah. um, length. You know, the project is a great project, I think. Um, you know, it's what they want to do. But I think, you know, one of the big things that we've discussed from the very beginning of this project is the impact on parking. Yeah. Um, every time we've been on it, it's we, been, we know that's been, yeah, it's it's been, been an issue. Long. And I felt like it, this, you know, this needs to come to the board level for discussion. Yeah. And we've worked talked with a lot of neighbors and other people in the area trying to find parking and we haven't been able to do so so far. Um, and um, obviously one of the things that happened when the site was the zoning changed so that we could put more units on the site. In order to make it viable for us economically, we need to limit it to 24 units. And we can only get two units on the site. We thought we would just get some underneath in the back, but it's such a convoluted mess of right of ways and stuff back there, we don't depend on that. We just can do it to another work. Um, under normal conditions, we would have to do parking anyway. We would have to build some kind of parking, so we would be certainly willing to participate with the paving and striping of this lot to help mm -hmm. make it happen, um, to help secure those Space for us. Um, we have to do that anyway. And so, we're, this is for us an investment in the community, investment in the town, and we have to do an investment in parking to help the community at large. That's, that's a win win for us, and we hope that that would be uh, acceptable to you. We do have uh, there's a map in there with a radius that you'll see. Mm -hmm. What we did was we looked at what's available for us other places that we own. So we own Arthur's, there's some available parking there. Um, and also the Royal View, there's a little bit of a walk. The circle represents an eighth of a mile, which is about 630 feet. Of course, if you're walking in bad weather, it's quite a scene with a lot of things. One of the reasons that we like this site is because it's right downtown, it's close to anything. <laughs> Many of the people that are looking to would be looking to live there would have cars, or maybe not. We, we, we studied our two lots at Arthur's and at Memorial Green. Arthur's were utilizing about 45%. We just looked at 
how many open spaces there are at a couple of different times during the day for a week or two in the weekend. But it looks like we're utilizing about 45 percent parking lot. So there's 22 spaces there. Um, and that Memorial View is a little higher than it's about 70 percent utilization. So. And people don't have a sign parking there. No, there's no sign. We typically have um, less than, so the, the requirement is 0.75, and we usually have a little bit less <coughs> maybe about 50%, because we have people that don't have the requirement. The requirement is 0.75, so 75% of the <coughs> units, or? Yes. Yeah. 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 So obviously we're looking to work with you guys and come up with a solution that, that we're comfortable with, Dan's comfortable with, and then we feel we can work with in the future. Our time timeline right now is we're starting, we've got a lot of A and E work done. Um, we're going into our funding rounds and they're currently doing permitting and we hope to get our town permits first. We're <coughs> going to do an fifty permit. And um, we're also doing our funding uh, requirements at the same time. We'll be back and talk to you about that. At some point, if we want to do this in the future. And um, so we would hope to be able to start construction um, early next fall, late summer. It's kind of a tight timeline for us. And construction period is about a year. Can I ask a further question on the 75%? Are the apartments um, advertised with parking? I mean, it's something that would prevent someone from parking there. Correct. We um, we are designing this based on the um, market study and housing needs study right. that, that we had. So we have a mix of units. Some of them are small studio units, um, one bedrooms and a few two bedrooms. So it's really designed for smaller scale for individuals and, and couples where they're um, we have. Older folks, seniors who are moving to town, so they're downsizing. Um, a lot of young workers who are trying to get in the market and they don't have time, they're trying to get started. And then we have businesses around town that obviously need mm -hmm. homes for their workers. And with the transportation that we have in town, it's kind of a unique situation, I think. Um, and it's one of the reasons we like this site, is we feel you can live at this site and not have to have a car to go anywhere in the community right now from that site. You can go. You can go all the way down to the stove and go to work on the mountain. You can go to the waterway. You can do that all on the public transportation from here. There's actually a new bus route to Harbor and back now. So we're, we're kind of promoting it that way, but you can't really get it done. And it's a big expense for people that are you know, low to moderate, <coughs> and that's our target market primarily. We'll have some. Market rate units here, but we also had very low income So the only issue is is the winter parking, basically, right? It's really the winter parking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There could be some. Uh, I don't know. It's, right now, yeah. there's times you can't park in that parking lot. <coughs> I mean, I, I come in and out at all different hours, and that parking lot is tight. I mean, you have to understand, River Arts runs a lot of big programs over there these days. And then you have the, the <coughs> MoGo and HW, they have functions. Yeah, I, I just, I can, I can see it if you can add the, if you can get that non parking place. I'd be a little concerned about taking away any parking, the street parking on Pleasant Street, just because like the elder programs that River Arts runs, um, and I know that's not part of this, but I, I would have some concerns about taking parking, the street parking. I agree with them about the line of sight, that it is, but it's, the street isn't exactly the road that people go 40 miles an hour down either. I mean, it's a little street and uh, I just know how many different programs these different places offer and I would hate to see something that lose some of these elders that go to River Arts because they can't park on the street and just cross right there. We also have BMW there, and they have a lot of functions. Yeah. And um, uh, I just think it's going to really tie up the parking downtown. We had 
and made a dollar for the par underground parking garage. We solved the problem right there. I'll be all for it. Well, I, there is, I mean, there is um, the parking. Listen, where did I see that? You had it all sorted out. <coughs> Dan, did the, part, the, 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 the analysis that Todd did, is that, is that circulating? Um, this one is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. That's kind of our cursory study. When we first started hearing about this project mm -hmm. last winter, you know, one of my first concerns was, and I think we talked to Chief, we're already writing tickets and getting complaints because there's no overnight parking right now for the new winter parking. Um, one of my first concerns about this project is that it's a great project, um, in, but where are these people going to park with the overnight parking? So we count spaces, we have 25 spaces. You know, on an average in, in the winter, we had eight spaces open. And, you know, it goes up and down, but I, I'll get calls you know, from people that are concerned about that. There's a lot of apartments already around there that depend on the overnight parking. <coughs> um, you know, the, the one the yeah. post office, you know, they, they, and I'll call them, they'll, they'll, they have to actually wait sometime because there are events going on and they have to go out and move their cars after the events are over so they don't get a ticket or get towed. Um, so that was just kind of a cursory study that we did looking at it from what we know we have available at the overnight parking. Um, this parking plan too, you know, we've had the, the village guys look at it. We want to make sure that we're going to do this. We can maintain it, you know, inform them. We both get plow and snow, we're good in the snow. Um, we had the fire department look at it to make sure that you know, they had access for fire trucks and the emergency vehicles to the back side of the buildings. Um, so from that perspective, we've done that. But once again, this still, you know, there's still a lack of overnight parking in particular for this. I think when we first started out with the project, we had 18 units. Originally, we were hoping to do it with 18 units. Yeah, and that would put, put us down to 12 or so, 14. Yeah. And if you have two on site, it puts us down to mm -hmm. We were hoping to have more on site, actually. Yeah, you, you know, so that, it's kind of this project started to get closer to what they really want to build and refine so on when they're working with the cost. So, once again, if you look at Overnight parking in particular, and I have a lot of concerns about daytime parking too. Even you know, people that work here sometimes have problems finding parking during the day. Apparently, um, there's a lot of open spaces in cars. <laughs> so it looks like there's eight spaces at Arthur, there's eight in Longview, two at the plant site. So that's 16. I mean, that's 18. So it's nine spaces basically we're talking about. I don't think it's going to walk. Nobody's going to walk. Nobody's going to park in more than one. We were just simply looking at um, the requirements, and there's no designated parking. So we we have a parking lot at Arthur's, for instance, that we go over and maintain and plow and take care of it, but it's also open to the public. There's no designated parking, so we can't put a sign there that says, um, you know, Arthur's residence only. Right. So anybody can park there any time, they can park there every night. And that's what we have to do, so we're just looking at that as a kind of a... It's a possibility. Back and forth kind of thing, yeah, so those are the good ideas. Um, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, as far as the numbers go with the plan, what exists out there today is 56 spaces. And currently 25 are designated as a night parking, yes. You see, there's yeah. actually there's overnight parking signs. The, the, as you go in that first row, and then all the way on the other end, where the charging station is. Yep. Um, yeah. What we want to do on the other end, where the charging station is, is move the charging station. So as they plow, it all goes back to that one end, and that way they, they can plow all in one direction. They can also, when they're hauling snow, they're they're doing the circuit in the parking lot to maintain it in the winter. So are they? Are we? Currently taking snow off site all the time now. Oh, no. So there's nowhere to plow it currently. Mm -hmm. Correct. So those are the overnight spots because they just are have been designated that way? That's been you know for you know for people to have a designated overnight parking so that you know the PD, you know, can help work with people, get them in the overnight parking and so that the crews can get in there and maintain it during the winter at night. I mean, or during the day for that matter. I don't think they plow too much during the day because it's too crowded. But particularly since a lot of work goes on at night, you know, when they're when they're hauling snow out, they're start generally starting at midnight, hauling snow out of the village, and that's not just that parking lot. That's the, the 
the sidewalks, that's all the municipally owned parking lots. Plus the intersections, they have to clear that out. Kevin, I think you probably know more about what they have to clear out. So it, it also, since they're, those parking spaces are away from where the equipment is working, so we don't have to worry about inloaders backing into them, all that other fun stuff that's out there yeah. to keep them out of the way. So it's quite the ordeal to get the snow out of the village. Um, we don't have a big circuit to haul it, but it's still quite the ordeal you know, to, to get it out. You know, snowstorm takes us about three to four days. You know, there's the plowing day, keeping everything clean, and then there's the cleanup that comes after it to get it out of the village. Um, that, that takes a couple of days to do. Uh, and timing is pretty important to us because if it's snowing again, then we're not cleaning. And it piles up, you know, and that's what happens. And then it just becomes, you know, last year I think our snow dump was you know, pretty well full. We have two snow dumps. So uh, it, it's quite the circuit to get the snow out of those. The reason why we pay such so much attention to the maintenance piece of it, make sure the guys can get in there, plow it, and then once again get in and clean it and keep everybody out of their way while they're doing it because it's, it's, it's a, it takes a lot of work to do it. Yeah. Has anybody ever considered shutting out the upper end of Hutchins Street? No, I don't think so. And I don't know how that would play with the, the I don't fire either. safety. I'm trying to think outside the box here. The municipal parking lot is not going to work. This is not going to work. Piles of snow in the wintertime, and plus the volume of traffic for all the, the things that have been mentioned already. I just don't see that volume of traffic being added to that. And, and sustaining it. We're already bulging. So I'm trying to think creatively here. What if it shut off the top of Hodgins Street, retaining wall brings widens that area a little bit, build a retaining wall up, and then you have angled par or, or even squared parking down that side uh, for the tenants along through there. Uh, I don't know. I, there's got to be some, we've been talking about parking. It was discussed but, with making Hutchins Street one leg. Mm -hmm. you, you could do that and then they get parking off. Yeah. Or parking but you still, yeah. Too many people go down further than that. I, oh, but I mean, there's I, a, I, yeah. And that was what I said. You got to cut them off. But. Yeah, no, 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 I'm looking to cut them off. Yeah, no, 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 I'm to cut them off. I, again, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out as a, as a means of just beginning to create and think about our parking situation because on-street parking is not a solution. Off-street is, we have to be creative about it. We've got to look at things that are going to be disturbing. And I'm talking about raising buildings. I'm talking about creating parking for our downtown if we're going to revitalize it. If we're going to increase our, our housing capacity downtown, we've got to have parking. Put a ramp over Hutchins Street, have a parking lot on top, there's the parking lot. <laughs> have an elevator come out and get your car to the Jim and I kicked around the idea of, you know, putting some overnight parking down at the office. Mm -hmm. It's not convenient, but it's, you know, especially the overnight winter parking. Um, we do have where the, uh, I wouldn't want to do it in the summer per se because of all the events that go on down there. Um, but in the winter, we do have the area that the skateboard park used to be at, but hey, you know, it's out of the way. You know, that could be designated as overnight winter park. You know, um, it's not, you know, like I said, I wouldn't want to do it in the summer, but could it be utilized? It's potentially utilized that in the winter for a It's not convenient. That's really good. I love the project. I want the project to be a success because with our little grocery store over there, with all the, all the businesses in the village, I think it's a great addition. We can't create a problem by solving another. So that's what we're doing. We're solving a, a housing issue and creating a parking problem that is already exists. We're just making it worse. So I think your idea about Hutchins Street is a good one. That's I think the one-way aspect. We have we already have one way into the post office. Mm -hmm. Maybe it comes out the other way. I don't know. I'm not a traffic planner, but someone who understands that would look at the flow. What would make the most sense? How are you going to get out of there? You're coming to leave somewhere. Which, which way are you going to go? Tell me why you're going to get out. Get out of Pleasant Street. Get out of the Get out of the hill. Yeah. That not, that is creating more confusion. Not if everybody comes down. That's what they do now. I watch it every day. Well, I don't know you're going to 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 I 
Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people they use it going down than they do going up. I mean, and I don't want to get into the parking yeah. debate yeah. on yeah. Hutchins Street, but I, I'm just I'm just saying that th this is not. I, I honestly don't see the, the waiver happening, recognizing the huge parking issue that's already there and making it worse. I, I, I'm not, I can't be in favor of it until we start doing some creative thinking about this. I've pushed for this for a couple of years and I, I volunteered. If there's a group in, in the community that wants to form the Lamont Parking Partnership, the LPP, you can get a second, you can have that one too. We're already on it. We want to continue to. Yeah. We've got a lot invested in this project. Absolutely. Now. We understand the issue around the parking and we're trying to be as creative as we can and you know, we good partners with the, with the town and try and make it happen. And mm -hmm. we looked at where can we increase parking. That's what Dan and I have been working on now for a year. And um, this is kind of what we've come up with. And we figure it's a yeah. good starting point and you know, it could be that this is the beginning and more stuff like something at the Oxbow or maybe if it gets out of the community more and other people step up and say, hey, we can provide the apartment over here, over here, all in that same general area that, you know, might start to happen. To finish off, you know, the, the numbers game here too, and I, I guess some of this is predicated on the idea that there are available overnight spaces there and maybe more diving needs to be done there to determine that. But so we have 56, 56 existing this proposal is 72. Mm -hmm. So that's an increase of 16 spots, basically just from rearranging this. Um, this shows a, a curve along Pleasant Street, but that's that's a decision that doesn't really affect the layout of these of these park, parking spots. So this middle area, there's a you know there's a, a grass island shown here at the end. Mm -hmm. Maybe that doesn't exist, so that you have easier plowing to do, and maybe there's a grass area over here instead. So the, the arrangement can move a little bit, but it's 29 over, overnight spots. Um, I guess so that's, I mean, that alone is an increase in four overnight spots from what's currently proposed, but you're also significantly increasing the, the efficiency of, of plowing and providing for, for snow piling areas because you're losing the nine, well, eight spots up on the very top to where the snow plowing would go. So. You know, you are gaining more spots. You're gaining a lot more spots. You're gaining more overnight spots. You're increasing the efficiency of the parking lot itself, and you're and you're creating snow piling areas. So there's there are a lot of positives to what we're talking about. Um, and the other thing too, just from the just the geometry of this, just to hit on it, you know, talking to Dan, it, the one way it does make a lot of sense. It's easy for flow, and the angled parking is nice for for angled. Um, you can actually decrease the aisle width when you have this angle parking. Right, right now we're showing 24 feet going up the right side and 24 feet coming out, it gets, it gets a little wider, but 24 feet is a lot of width for backing in and out of angle parking spots. That can go down to 18 or even 16 feet. Um, and that's pretty appropriate for angled spots. So there is still even more room to be had in here. We just wanted to leave it larger like this so you can have more more uh, turning radius and more areas to get around but i guess my point is that by the numbers and by the design you know it is a it is an improvement in the basis of the idea for the, the, the project to come in front of the drb and ask for the waiver is that there is some availability there's work willing to work with the town to help improve the situation and hopefully that would that would be it but if there's if there's issues in the first place, I guess that wasn't where we where we came from. Well, and I want to you know, say, yeah, I really want to do this parking. It's irregardless of what they might do, this parking lot project needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, that the island can go away. You know, the stormwater treatment funds are out there to be able to do that. Having the big hole in the ground where the island is now and its proximity to the stormwater system that exists there makes an excellent time to, to put. So either underground treatment or storage or any of that other stuff right there could be you know pretty easy to do irregardless of this project you know this something needs to happen with that parking lot to increase the parking in the downtown so you know that's been something on the radar for a while now to be able to do that and you just a simple reconfiguration of paving can, can take care of a lot of that then there's a broader issue i think that 
you're right. The parking, um, overnight parking and parking in general is starting to get really, really constricted in the downtown and availability is an issue. Um, you know, we had a project that we want to do over by the noise house next summer that has some, you know, but that doesn't necessarily solve this problem. So the problem I got, I see too, you know, you say overnight parking. If you don't go to work, ten people don't go to work one day, they're fine too, they're not going to have to all day. And that happens. I mean, it's a great project, but we don't have the room for you guys. I mean, if you're going to, they're going to cut this down. I can tell you one other thing that will happen. That won't happen is the BMW on the night park. And then it's going to be carried over there. No, we that, talked about that. Yeah, well, and I don't think that will happen because the town won't bother. They're going to be cars all over the place. Now, we got, now, it's a great project, but... I, well, if we know where they can park, then... That don't work. That don't work. Ron? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I haven't been on the zoning for a planning commission for years, so I've always interpreted the parking to be an integral part of the lot itself. And of all the apartments and everything that has developed in the town, uh, because of zoning, they've been able to add on another apartment had on-site parking. And this particular project has hardly none. And my viewpoint is <clears throat> that the public parking lot is for public use and not for private use. Conversely, we have private parking lots that are available for public use, use anytime because that's the way the bylaws are written. I don't think it exists in this town. No. It, it, it absolutely does. Arthur's. Mm -hmm. Arthur's yeah. in uh, Memorial View. Mm -hmm. All right. No actions needed tonight, right? Well, I think you're getting, you're trying to get on the schedule here. So yeah, we're going to DRB. Yeah, we're on the schedule for 11. Yeah, I mean, so as part of the DRB process, I mean, there is a there is a waiver allowance in the rules that says if you're within 500 feet uh, of a public parking area, it can be used for for use. But it also says that that is dependent on the DRB's approval pending certain details, one of which is availability, right? So we're gonna go in front of the DRB uh, on the 11th with this plan uh, presented to them, the, the buildings as you see there, which is 24 units, which requires 18 spots. There's gonna be two proposed on the, on the proposed site plan, so we need 16 additional spots. And there's a request as per the waiver to use this parking lot for those spots. Um, so it really boils down to what the availability is. Um, there is, I mean, as it's, as it's known right now, there's not enough availability. So the idea is that given the, the changes to the parking lot, which my housing project uh, would, would work with the town on, does that create enough availability for the waiver to be approved? And we're here talking about it now because obviously you all play a huge role in whether that decision or answer is yes or no. Right. Yeah, so it's what what do we need to do to get to that answer, right? Because if the answer is no, then we need to find other alternatives. If the answer is yes, there's availability, and yes, the waiver can be approved because there is availability, then theoretically the, the project can be approved from that standpoint. So we felt this was the right place to come first to have that discussion to figure out how do we get to that answer. I guess I have another question. So I know that we know what the issues are. The other, the other thing you brought up was the availability of virtual parking options. So between all that and the spaces that we have available on some of the other projects, you know, in, in aggregate, it's that enough to supply? I, I think, I think we're saying with particular things that you're calling from the DRP, you're, you're asking for a waiver to utilize this parking lot for your project. Um, and that's my concern, you know, if, if you can say you, you're going to 
put in your lease agreement that these people have to park there, but then I got the PD that's got to be able to figure out how to enforce that. And, and the worst thing that we can do here, one of the worst things we do, is we issue parking tickets and we tow people's cars. Um, and, and rightfully so, people get upset about oh, really upset, probably more upset than anything else is when we tow somebody's vehicle. So when the PE is stuck in the middle of the night trying to find somebody at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, and you've got the village crew there, again, ready to go to work, and you've got a car parked right in the middle. It's a huge liability on the town because we're trying to plow cars parked there, and the last thing we want to do is tow it, damage it, or you know, even if it's not snowing, give it a parking ticket. So I guess what I was getting yeah. at, so it was, you know, yeah. we've got a ways to go to get this project to even just to construction. So do we have time? That's up to board, I think, on how they to want like to look into to, to be able to come up with enough alternatives. Yeah. We're we're committed to the project. We've got quite an investment in it. We're committed to we would certainly participate in helping to develop this with these additional spaces here. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's my I'm interested in looking for solutions. So affordable housing is necessary. Yeah. It certainly is. Yes, we needed it. We're not doing something that's not needed. We wouldn't be doing it. Right. We make a viable project. The reason there's 24 units is because the site itself is very difficult see. to do. And we have to put enough units in it to spread the cost of those number of units to make it financially viable. Sir, so, uh, just the, the, the budget for your projects, uh, just by what's in the papers, yeah, the CC was. But in the papers, in the old days, they ran around two hundred thousand dollars for a studio. Is that about correct? What was in the uh, news of Citizen six, seven years ago? But two hundred thousand is a soft one. Mm -hmm. At that price point, surely with some configuration, given the topography of that lot, mm -hmm. you could easily do some parking spots underneath. We and I can't imagine, imagine, right, the total mm -hmm. is going to push beyond what's allowed from the federal agencies to fund it. So I think some creative parking, because in other areas, that's what we see. We see the parking down underneath. They don't typically have the advantage you've got of the grade change, which would allow you to layer it. But where you only need 24 units, mm -hmm. so you really only need, to be fair to the town, 48 spaces on your own property. You have a budget that the private sector doesn't have. Uh, clearly, if we could build units for two or 300,000 and have them back in the it would be a fabulous place to do business. But your agencies and only local can have these sorts of budgets. But could you at least look at parking underneath, because we see it everywhere else. We, we have. Um, we looked at that very hard. That was our first option. Um, the reason we're not doing that is because there's a series of right-of-ways in the back that come Portland Street all the way to Pleasant Street that make it so that we can't, we just can't pull cars in under the building and get them in and out and save it. Again, back to your budget levels being so generous I have to believe those rights of ways could be purchased. Especially sure where the building is. Even if they were purchased, they're so tight. The area is so tight in between the other buildings in the back. I'd be happy to look at it. Sure. Thanks. Wasn't the town hall that right away through there? The old Taylor's restaurant? And the, no, they no. They were, that was a town building. 16 is a Approximately 16 foot wide right away. Uh, this is approximately 16 foot right away that runs from Portland, we believe, out to Pleasant. It runs at least through two thirds of the uh, way through the, what Jay Barber owns and what this lot has. Right. Uh, but it's only 16 feet wide. It's privately owned, not right. publicly owned. There's a right into there. Used to be a Miller Road way back. I'd like to look at the, the municipal parking lot design as configured here. This project is a go, and we reconfigure and restripe everything there. Then we could look at this as far as piling the snow, where we pile the snow, and see if we can make it make it work. I, I, I want to try to make it work. 
I just, I, I'm scribbling on the thing over here, trying to figure out a place how much room we'd have for snow that would get us through a storm, a, a typical storm, six to 10 inches. You know, anything above that is abnormal and everybody's inconvenienced, so it just. We are in a snow belt here, you know. Yeah, I remember that. Also, yeah, yeah, the idea was down the snow will pile up here. Right, very top, you know. The, the space. Space. The, that space would be used in the summer. Right. Yeah, off, I mean, off winter time, that space would still be used for parking with snow. Yeah, once the snow was removed. Yeah. So it sounds like the plan would be that you would pile it and get to move on a regular right basis. Well, well a few that's days. A, a few days. That's, that's, that's the original <laughs> one. Yeah, you know, it's, it's basically gone. It's, but it's not usually the next day. You no, have to deal with it. It's not. Right. It's well, if they're doing a the snowstorm, you know, they're, yeah. 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 they're, they're, they're working 12, 18 hours. You know, but the idea is, is when they can come in at midnight to clear it, because that's the only time they can get time to clear it, is they have to start at midnight. Otherwise, there's just too much traffic for them to see. But I guess to answer the question. So summertime, it would always be, those those eight spots would always be open. In the wintertime, they would often be closed be, until snow could be. But right, they're, they're, you know, we have the overnight from here. There's a parking van in, in the village limits. All winter long to allow a crew to do it and to try to, you know, so yeah. around the signs like Burlington does where there's the overnight van. So we, we have a designated parking spot. So right now, there's no overnight parking allowed in here, or yeah, there's the spots. Else. There's the, the first I have the first That's row, okay. jack back or front forth, and then the very end right now. And right now, they piled up around the island in there and they hollowed out of there. I think that's what's making it a little challenging is it's hard to tell what's current, what's new, what's designated overnight yeah. in the current, what's designated overnight in the proposed. It's a little hard to make heads or tails. Um, so I don't know if that would help Eric. Just trying to under understand this a little bit more. I, I, a, I don't want to get the car before the horse. This is my fear is we, if we right. approve this or we give the positive indication no, no, DRB, right. they approve the waiver and we go building ahead and then all of a sudden we run into a wall we can't climb. Yep. So I, I, I Well, we fully understand yeah. waiver. We get a waiver. We still have to keep working with the town to figure out all the time. We know we're within the 500 feet. We still have to work it out. So it's going to be Kind of be okay with the end. everybody else at home, so it's not going to be. Okay. Yeah, I can see way I'm talking regardless. I, I'm going to go long term, say everything three years from now. You know, you guys are you're not out of it, but you know, then I've got people that are calling because I think Chief told me today and somebody calling him, Hey, I, you know, you tell me that you're giving me a ticket, but I don't have any place to park right now, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what we're trying to avoid. You know, it's those phone calls and then the officers that are out there. Yeah, nobody likes to write a ticket. Nobody likes to tell anybody. You know, um, <laughs> just, yeah. it's not what we want to do. So I, I think, um, you know, the, the officers are out there, and, you know, and then we get the phone call, and then, hey, I got no place to park. And your tenants don't want that. You know, no, I got no, yeah. no, no, no. So, you know, boy, we're trying to come up with a. With a All right. So I don't. I think we need. Hey, go ahead. Um, so the parking lot, the municipal parking lot, uh, there's a couple of eyesores there. And one of them is the old uh, saloon there. Okay. Uh, Turn about it. And then that has a big four rent sign on it. And next to it is an old, kind of dilapidated, but not very attractive white building, stained furniture or something. Nephew. Nephew, nephew, nephew building. Nephew for rent. Looking for people. So you've got this beautiful, and I'm sure it's going to be beautiful, the building you put in on Hutchins Street. You want to expand this parking lot going out to River Arts, take away, isn't that from what I understand, at park. But then you've got these two, like, kind of eyesore buildings that are still for rent. So to me, it doesn't make sense to be adding parking and all this and having these two places that nobody knows what's going to happen to them when you're trying to beautify the town. And the people that say want to rent those places and renovate them to either another restaurant or a store, they're going to need parking too. I mean, I, I just think this these two ISO places back there that are for rent. I think 
think you have to consider that those are still correct. And if someone buys them, they're going to want parking, and maybe you want to make them into some kind of a downtown. Well, when that was a fire, that fire left the fall over there. That's what you're I didn't call her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice catch, Buck. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. <laughs> Last comment, Ron. Go ahead. The, the application had one other category that was denied on, and that was the uh, historical district. To me, I'll list some good points to this particular project for developing that site and for affordable housing. I look at it as being a dinosaur for that area, unfortunately. You know, if what was there, if you replace the house that was there, you probably have four or six apartments and on-site parking. And the probably would have got the permit. And that was also a traditional use. All right, what do we want to do for next steps? I think we need more detail and maybe some alter alternative solutions. Yeah, I mean, I think my concern is these guys should be ready to get in front of the year too. So, um, yeah. No. Yeah, I'm not sure we're prepared to make any yeah. signaling one way or the other at this point. Or we're going to reconfigure the, the parking lot's going to get reconfigured. Yeah, I guess that's the other 16 piece. Sixteen more, sixteen more parking spaces there. Taking a look at Hutchinson Street. Sure. I'm looking at different traffic pattern there and putting some parking spots in there too. So there's there's two options. Well, so we're having we're confounding issues, I feel, at this point. So um, if if Dan, I think if you want to come back to us with this separated out, okay. this to me would make more sense. I think we need to separate issues. I'm because yeah, we, we're, we're really confounding issues here from my perspective. Sure. Um, so we, I mean, we can come back with two two plans, like existing and proposed, and really try to understand what exists as overnight versus what proposes overnight. Get like the facts down on paper for presentation as far as that goes. Yeah, I think we have. So this is being presented to us in the context of a housing project, but we have a parking challenge already. Dan's saying we want to move forward with this anyway. So I think from my pers my sole perspective uh, perspective is that we need to look at this project, the, the parking lot, on its own. Uh, I don't know who's paid for this work, who's done this work, but um, I think if we need to tap, we need to solve parking or start to solve parking in the town. Um, I think once we have a plan, we could then potentially, you know, look you know, back to your project, but uh, it's making this process a little confusing, looking at the two things at the same time, um, at least from where I sit. I mean, I think it boils down to availability. And I, I get yeah, I get that. To where, I mean, we've, we've kind of hung our hat a little bit on the, the idea that there is availability in this parking space, in this parking lot. The real, the real answer to whether or not it whatever makes sense for this proposed development is what is that availability? And I, I don't know how to get to that. Right. You know, we you know we've known that we wanted to redo this parking lot for a while. And, and, um, you know, unfortunately we couldn't, you know, this is a, we could have probably got to it this construction season, this past construction season, but we couldn't do that with the paving project. There was just there was just no way that we could pull all the parking off the street and the parking lot at the same time. Um, so you know, we, we talked about that in the past. It didn't make sense to try to redo the parking lot and pave the downtown at the same time. And that would have been way too much of a disaster in the way of parking for everybody. And so there was no way we did it. Now we're, we're, we've talked about it, we're ready to move forward with it, and then this project hits us at the same time. I thought get a technical question or a process question for you at the DRD level. You know, if the waiver is not there, I mean, they can't approve a project at the DRD level without some sort of a plan for parking. Is that correct? That's not what they did. They may approve this next week. So, another in other instances where there is a public improvement 
pro, uh, proposed, the one I can think of that jumps to the top of my mind was when they turned some of the old Genesis building, Multi Mental Health, into the state um, temporary mental health facility. The DRB conditioned the project, uh, approved the project conditionally upon the developer uh, executing an MOU with the select board regarding adding that traffic light there. So if you want to ask the DRB to recess this till January, I'm sure they would do that. Um, can't control what the board's going to do, obviously. But I think um, the DRB would probably be happy to let the select board negotiate the specifics of what private dollar would go to improve the parking lot, because the parking lot is largely efficient right now. The design could be, uh, as you guys probably discussed, I missed most of it, but just restriping alone can yield 30, 40% more parking out there. Um, so if there's private dollars going to be put in that, you guys are okay with that. And you kind of some MOU, and the DRB will basically condition the project based on the MOU. Is what's happened in the past. So I can see that path going forward here. But you have to act relatively, there's an application from the board, there's a time limit we should act, so it's got to be done in the next month or so. It can't take 100, 100 days. Okay. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, just like comments, you know, I'm on the board with my housing partnership, so I'm, you know, for the project. I think that. You know, just something that I would like the select board to consider is how desperately needed affordable housing is in our community. Uh, there's a lot more parking spots in town than affordable housing units. So, um, you know, please keep that in mind. And this is going to be a significant million dollars of investment in our community that we'll get benefit from as well. Um, you know, whether or not this project goes through parking in town is, is going to we're always, you're never going to have enough of it. You're always going to need more of it. And I would just ask that the uh, that the board consider all avenues to increase parking town wide. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Judy had a good point about maybe making Hutchins Street one way, putting parking spots on one side, you know, expanding this lot, maybe other things as well because you know it certainly is necessary. So I, I support the project. I think that the housing is needed. I think that you know. The town should support it as well. I think people, you know, having concerns about this are valid, but you know, I think there's there's a solution that can be found. So, um, just just my two cents on the whole thing. Thanks, Jim. There's other housing partnerships around the state. Do you know of any other relationships like this with municipalities? Yes. Yes, it's been done in different places. There's a new building on Taylor Street and Montpelier. Um, where there's a bus terminal underneath the house, uh, and they have they have to deal with the municipality yeah. and my partner too. Mm -hmm. And I can I can find others for you. There, for instance, I think. So. And they have the same housing, the same density parking requirements. Same kind of thing, yeah. You know, that, is that a, is that a town parking lot, or a city parking lot? Is that a, is that a developer parking lot? It's, I believe it's a city parking lot. So the they they built that for you. Housing trust do that. I think the parking lot is there and they built upgraded it. They built a um, bus station, a new bus station and house on the bus. That one right across the bridge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like in a capital plaza. Yeah. Almost it is, um, there's another one, you know, the French block in Montpelier that was just redone. So that would be uh, that walk right in the middle of town and it was pretty empty except for the stores on the first floor and they would be packed all the other floors. And there's no there's no specific parking for that either. I mean, if you want the density downtown and again we looked at this site because of the change in the zoning that allowed us this density in the downtown. Um, and the location is so prime for this kind of housing. Yeah. People can walk. Way to downtown is going to have commerce and foot traffic downtown. Um, and, and because of the location to the parking lot. I mean, that, yeah, the availability of that waiver request is a driver. Yeah, I, I, I don't hear anyone not in favor of the yeah. project. I think the concerns are we've got a few more things that we need to try to figure out the logistics. Trying to balance out yeah. the needs of our, uh, of our, motor, our, our um, transit. Numbers that come in during the day, the needs of housing, and the needs of business. Because the point was very well made. There are two vacant businesses, one more viable than the other, that has been a business recently that 
depending on what goes in there. I, I can tell you a personal knowledge, a small business that is now up and going in Morrisville looked at that space to start with and the decision to not use that was absolutely about parking availability. They said, well, yeah, no I way, we're going to put a commercial space, there's no place to pull in the car. So there's no park for that, as there is now. So anyway, yeah, I think if we can, the suggestion to push that hearing out till January, if it still meets your timeline criteria, give us some time to uh, work on the parking piece and see if we can uh, co-work some projects. So how long do they have time? You have, you have to make a decision that has to be made. What's the, the DRB has to issue a decision within 45 days of closing the hearing. The DRB could convene us a couple times, but the developer could not agree to the opinion. So uh, normally the DRB only meets once, sometimes twice in a project. They almost, I, I can't recall when they met three times on something. So they could, over, they could recess this next week to January. At that point, they have some sort of LHP and select board as an MOU about the private improvements of the public parking lot that allows the DRB to act on the waiver uh, and, and act on the project. But the DRB can actually continue it for quite they a while. They can continue it for quite a while, yes. Yeah, they can continue it for quite a while based on more information. So they right. don't have to make a decision right away. Right. They can open the hearing, recess it. They can improve other parts of it and recess that part until the decision is made about the part. They could. I don't really will. I don't know. I can't see that. Well, and that's where I think, you know, I, I would ask the select board to be able to provide some guidance to the DRB to, to, to ask them to, you know, continue that piece of the DRB until this can be worked out. I mean, this is all happening relatively quick on this. Um, and I don't think anybody wants the DRB to make a decision that's not going to be the best thing for the town. That's the best way to put it. So, the select board could ask the DRB to continue the hearing until the parking solution is solved. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, you want to ask the DRB to continue until the second meeting of January? I mean, this is December 11th. That would be, I don't have the calendar in front of me. That was the board. It could be continued for three months if that's what they want, right? As we're listening. You're listening. Yeah. It, it could be continued for. Definitely, they're still waiting for evidence. Okay. I mean, I've, you know, I've seen DRB hearings go on for years. Getting. Yeah. I just don't think this DRB is doing that. No condition based on some sort of agreement that you guys have. You know what? You hit the nail right on the head. I'm done listening to this parking lot being held hostage. We need the upgraded parking lot. I don't know if this is about dollars and cents or what it is. But we're not going to upgrade our parking lot when our apparatus can get in, have decent parking in there because of a project that hasn't broke ground yet. I don't know all the particulars, but I know bullshit politics. I hear it all the time. Pass this bill, we'll throw these things in with it too. You know, as governor's taught about legalizing marijuana, how much other shit was in the book this thing. All I want to know, you had it right, to bite it up, talk about the parking lot, and then talk about whatever DRB's got to do with these gentlemen here on this project. I've seen the project. Yep. Do you still have four parkings in the front that are handicapped of your building? The current iteration has two perpendicular spots, one is handicapped. And you have any on street bump up, bump in right there or no? No, there's just come in. I went through the first meeting and I know we were talking about at one point four parking spots in front of the building. Currently, the current site plan that's proposed are going to be reviewed uh, next Wednesday has two perpendicular spots in the front. One is handicapped. And they're actually under the building. Yeah. So all I'd ask is for you guys, Chris, you had it right, get these two things separated. Let's talk about when you guys figure out the parking lot and figure out the parking for the building. Yes, we always need buildings. I worked with Todd to work with Graham on his buildings. You know, it's just something we need to do and I can't keep here in this parking lot being postponed because of this. All right, so if we can come back, we'll look at the parking spot, 
um, if the rest of the board is okay with it, uh, we'll ask the DRB to, to hold uh, until January. So we can say as a board we're in favor of the project, the concern is about the park. I'm not, I have, I'm, would not ever be opposed to limiting affordable housing. I think the project itself has challenges given there are parking uh, restrictions. So it's a very political answer, I realize, but um, that's all okay. Yeah. Just say one thing. So we are scheduled for the agenda for December 11th, next Wednesday. And it probably makes sense for the project to go to that DRB because they are reviewing things besides parking. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's good for us to be aware of all Other the issues or concerns, concerns that yep. the year we might have. So it might it probably be good for us to go to that and then recess. But I know you have to recess to a date certain. So I don't know if there's any uh, way that we could. I don't know the calendar, but I don't. Have that idea. Second, second, fourth Wednesday of January. There's no December availability for Christmas. So. Wednesday, so that second, May. Fourth Wednesday. Eighth and the twenty second. Yeah. So it'd be one of those two dates. I guess it boils back to like what? How do we? How, how do things get handled at the second board level to get to that recess? I, I would ask. Given the complexity of the challenge, there's a very complex problem. Why we're here? Because it is a complex problem. I, I would ask the select board to make a motion to request the DRB to hold the meeting until the second Wednesday of January. Second Wednesday of January. Yeah. 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 Second Wednesday of until the January 22nd meeting. So not go to the... No, start hearing, but then have at the select board, oh, or the, the DRB gotcha. can recess it, continue the hearing until the January 22nd. So then... What would for the, be particular for the parking waiver request. Gotcha. So my question is, what is our plan then to try and work out what we need to work out? So we'll have to take some of that off. And bring it back to the select board. Well, I think we need to start talking about, again, I think my proposal anyway is to try to s start to separate the two. Absolutely, you can work in consultation, you know, yeah, if when necessary, sure but, but yeah, want to be part of the solution. Sure. Yep. I just want to make sure we try to solve our challenges and then we can work with you. Um, so. You guys, you would have meetings on the... 16th, January 6th, and January 20th. Yeah, we have the first and third, third, third Monday, yeah. right? Correct. Yeah, I'm willing to come in and meet with you and work specifically on parking. So we have to be careful not to have three board members right. involved in the collectively meeting at once. So um, why, don't we, why don't we do this? Um, let's get Todd, Kevin, and Doug. Uh, Together, because and you know to, to at least look at the winter maintenance piece of because I think a lot of that hinges on winter even winter maintenance. Um, you're the highway liaison, another member of the board to come in and sit down with us. Um, you guys are more than welcome to be there just to kick around ideas. Um, you know, to, to more brains in the room that the center on needs to be on something like this. Bob is not here. I I make well, is that Bob going? <laughs> I, I know Judy has a lot of, a lot of interest in this as well, so perhaps extend. I'll make, yeah, I'll second I'll make, so, this is a complex issue I think we could talk about for another couple hours. Um, so, we need a motion uh, to... I make a motion that we uh, request the DRB address issues that are ready to be addressed, but to recess on the issue of parking until January 22nd, giving us time to work out a solution. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you both very much and thank everyone for your yeah, participation. You. Yeah, thanks. So I'll just follow up just to thank the floor, Eric, Judy, you, me, and Todd, and the highway guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Now, continuation of the budget section, general government. 
There's another appointment, I believe. Yeah, I only signed two. There's two. Yeah. I only signed one. Erica, do you have the other sergeant appointment um, letter? I do, but that one says Jason Luno as well. Huh. So you can sign it if you want. Oh, it's <laughs> not in the car. No, uh, sorry. Alright, who's that? Erica, can you just let it, Chief's going to bring it in. Can you just let us know when they're available to yeah, sign? Yeah, I'm here. I'm going to text you guys. For yeah. Thanks. All right, Dan. Uh, doesn't say this to MJ. All right. You walking us through or Dan? Um, about to? Well, I don't know if you want to start. Um, the, the purple pages are what you're going to be looking at. Um, the overview, budget overview. This, um, that is what we're currently at now, and you can see the second page where all the changes are. So you originally got the white ones that were in your folder. The, the purple one for general is what you're going to be looking at because these purple changes all took effect after. I have kind of the white ones. So. Um, so basically, we haven't discussed highway or capital yet, but if everything is to go the way, go through the way it is, you're looking at a 5.9% budget increase. Okay. I didn't hear that again. 5.9% increase. Yeah. Yeah, well, we haven't done any modifications yet. That's just a, the first. This is our. Very this first is still. Event. These are just presentations at this point. Yeah, that, that's the very first thing. So. Um, the purple page, pages of general government, is what you're probably going to want to go through under the general government tab. These are the expenses. You can also go through the revenue part too. So. Why less, why less anticipated revenues? We are in less anticipated revenues. If you look at the revenue division, the revenue tab, you'll see um, you will see other uh, you will see the bottom. Um, with, so the budget then you have uh, revenue uh, yeah. uh, Okay, it's not yeah, we can't spend on. Right, these are revenues that we think we're going to get aside from the taxes. Right, right, right. So just so we're on the same page, you're on page one of the general budget. Of the expenses, yeah. yes. Okay. Sorry with the legislative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's been the <coughs> what's been the jump in the purchase services? I know it's an adjustment from the actual. I realize that, but what was the increase? Usually, it's engineering services that we have to do. You know, different things that come up. Okay. Any questions on the first page of the expenses? The uh, deferred count. Yes. Is that the ta 
I'm not. I mean, my understanding of deferred comp is it's a because I'm employee's payroll. No, well, no. It's in lieu of health insurance. It's in lieu of health insurance. It's a benefit instead of taking health insurance. So if an employee doesn't take the health insurance. So what's so that's cash in lieu though. No, cash in lieu is actual cash you receive. Deferred comp is they receive a benefit that is put towards a retirement. So it's both the same, the same thing, but broken into two separate. Uh, yeah. One goes cash, out in your paycheck. Cash itself is more dollar value wise. Mm -hmm. The deferred comp is, I mean, the, the cash in lieu is less dollar wise than the deferred comp. If you. Deferred comp's pre-tax. Yes. Okay. It's just an option. You just choose which way it goes. Got it. All right, next page. Questions on the second page? Actually, I have one question. How long have you been doing the animal control? Uh, 40 years? 40. Must be? I don't know. Don't look at me. I don't think I am. The only reason I mention it is I'm assuming at some point you're going to give that up. Oh, yes. Um, Link to them someday. I, I'm not sure we'd find anybody ever to do that for $75 a month. Um, thank you. But <laughs> that may need to be addressed at some point. Yes. Um, and so what's what keeps me going is because I know that probably it would change and it would change drastically. I just, I wouldn't do it for $75 a month. But you're a better man than me. <laughs> Love dogs. <laughs> better than people. <laughs> well, all right, uh, page three. So the election expenses uh, kind of up and down last year, they were half as much as they are this year, but prior to that, they were closer to what they are. Because every other year we have the primary and the general election, mm -hmm. and this year's presidential. So, and the only reason that they were up last year is in, in and out the school with the six mm -hmm. extra elections. Yeah. But then, this, but then we build the school, so there, there's a flip in the revenue. How could I forget? There's an in and out. <laughs> The increase was probably the peanut M&Ms that I ate. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Two thousand dollars. Anything on page? Anything else? Page three. Page four. Expecting more BCA members to show up? It's the same. It's the flip every other year. It's we'll have more elections. The general Got election it. we um, a presidential general election we will probably Got have four it. times the workers. We hope. <laughs> Page four. 
Pitch five. <laughs> so Nemrec, I can see the cost going up on that, yet you're still having problems with it? it and we're paying more for them to come to come fix their own problems? That's not what the increase is. The increase is their annual, annual. support contract. They just increased it from $1,400 to $5,000. Well, I can understand why. Can I their, their, their stuff's broke. I know. So. We don't have a choice if we have never we have to pay it. And I have about 200 <laughs> emails from every single clerk in Vermont. Just did everybody. The whole state got the same. Yeah, we all got increased big time. Everybody pays the same. Yeah. What does NEMRIC stand for? New England <laughs> Municipal Resource. Resource Center or something like that. Yeah. It's our software program. Supposedly the state is announcing in January their new vendor. That's why you'll know. It could be network stuff. Network, your network systems line item is increased quite a bit because we anticipate potentially having to get different software or at least get SimQuest to come in and fix whatever we're going to be doing. We don't know what network's going to do, what the state will do with network. Couple things. Sarah is going to change her land record program next year, which is great. It's what we need to do. It's the right thing to do. And then any changes in number, what happens if they change on their other end? Is it has to be able to connect into our system, <coughs> which means we have to bring somebody in from SimQuest to come in and make sure everything works together like it should. So if, if they go and change from number to a completely different vendor. We're going to have to make sure the connectivity on our end and everything works together. So we've added money in the budget to be able to do that. We, we don't know that that will happen, but we don't know that it won't happen either. Anything else on page five? Page six. The um, legal fees is just our best guess at this point, given the current restructuring. Yeah, I think we just threw something in. Questions on page six? Page seven. The Oxbow maintenance repair seems to be a, a moving target over the past couple of years, dollars and cents wise. We're going to add the bathrooms, but that's brand new. We shouldn't have any maintenance costs there. We still have some cleaning costs. Cemeteries mowing things. Is there a chance that they would want to do it every every week? 
we could ask you if you yeah. could uh, kind of double your price for doing it, probably. Yeah, so I wonder. I know Dennis is asking if you guys have discussed that. Well, I know they, they've discussed it, and I know and the other people, I guess, used to mow it every week. And Two weeks seems like a long time. Yeah, some some of them grow faster. I think what what I think is happening it's is good. there's some people that are mowing them in between themselves. Yes, yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, something because you go out to bid on that, right? Or do you? We do. Yeah. All right, everybody was really happy with the contractor that we yes. had last year. Yes, yes, I heard great. Yeah, um, of the contractors that we've had probably have less complaints last year than any other year. Okay. He would take on more. I just saw him two weeks ago, and uh, he, he, he may be worth having a discussion with. Cemetery records maintenance, is that done by, who does that? <laughs> Is that the new system? Work? Okay. And that's just, that's just putting in a number. Yeah, it's just a guess. We've been, I've been working with them. Um, I've demoed, like, you've heard some scale switch on them, but they all, they all need information, but we don't really have some kind of an unfolding pattern of where to go from here. I can jump the gun. That's okay. Anything on seven? Anything else? Just eight, eight. Uh, eight, sorry, eight, eight. Sorry. Um, our electrical costs are going to be fixed for the next year because of the we bought the contract, we got the contract with the solar panels, so we actually reduced our electrical contract, our, our cost for upcoming years is going to be a fixed price for the whole year. So, mm -hmm. great. Any other questions or comments on eight, nine? What, um, so there's a proposed stipend or something for someone to maintain funding for employees to operate and maintain programs? That had been in the budget for a long time, and then the past few years it hadn't, and there have been people, um, it's, it's mostly to do the ice rink, and there's been volunteers, but it's, it's becoming too much for the volunteers, so. We'd like to bring it back into the budget like it used to be. <coughs> or if there were any, um, like, there, we've been talking about possibly having a summer event that maybe hiring some um, lifeguards at the Oxbow type of thing. To swim in the river? No, to kayak, but oh, okay. um, to have some lifeguards where you get <laughs> out with the kayak. Okay. Just to be safe. Put a pool in. <laughs> it's beautiful. Just dig out those trees. The ski right down the street from the bathroom. Do something you want. Anything else on page nine? All right. Final. Let's go bathrooms are kind of. Kind of one shot to you, right? Well, that's the that's, that's the, the loan. loan. So oh, that's yeah, that, that's the loan. Oh, all yeah. all that's under debt service. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. okay. That's all fixed anyway. The only thing that's gone up drastically is the uncompensated absences. You'll notice. That's because people want to retire. We don't want them to. We're, we're trying to keep them here, locking the doors, that kind of thing, but they're going to eventually. And we have to have some money for them to do that. Good planning. Very good. <clears throat> Hats off to Tina. Thank well, it's you. not just me. Any questions for yeah. Tina or Dan? Yes. Hats off to Tina. Thanks. He's one of the Sorry, I'm just hurrying to this. that budget line item. Don't, don't get in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to go over the revenue part? Or? 
sister. And then we'll put this one. There's that. That is on your tap, the little tap that says revenues, and you look in the front part. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Some, a lot of this we don't know yet, right? Um, Big one. Well, we never, we never budget that. <laughs> we only ever do the actual there because okay. that's what we're trying to budget for is to figure out how much we need. So the actual in 18, 19, we'll see. That's the actual for 1819. Right. We don't put an uh, item in there because that's what we're going to raise taxes for. So we can't reduce our expenses, you know, until we know how much we're going to raise mm -hmm. money for. So, but you figure it's going to be at least that or more. Well, it would probably have to be at least that. <laughs> probably a lot more. Depends on what you want. What's the, oh, never mind, ignore, ignore me. There's some cost shifting in mind towards the bottom, like if you're looking at the X's. Yeah. So yep. um, the legislature um, changed a lot of things with town work fees in July. They told us like the week before. Um, so recording, they up the fees to $15 a page, but mm -hmm. four of it has to be sent to preservation and um, Eleven can go towards um, recording, so that it's state statute. And um, I don't know why. I think just because we've been doing it, we we had a line item for digitization and preservation, but we're all the money that you use is basically combined to do the same thing with the same. So um, we're just moving it to where how we're supposed to be doing it as of July. Because it all goes, I have to put it in the preserve funds. Any other questions on page one revenue? Page two. Dan, the state aid, is that, the, is that a best guess? Yeah, it, is. it really, it hasn't changed. They, they up it every now and then, but it's a best guess what we're going to get. thought that the legislature would increase it. Slim to not. So the all the the other two things they changed with clerk's fees is the um, bulk use charge. They doubled so it's not four dollars an hour. Um, so it's my best guess. But two dollars an hour goes back to the state for <laughs> and um, sure. vital records best guess to the price did not change, but they changed the law. And um, you have to give your firstborn child an order to get your birth certificate, but you can go to any town. Um, so we've seen an increase in revenue because it's convenient for people to come here. Anything else on page two? Page three. Questions on page three? These are all kind of estimates too. Right? Yeah, everything yeah. Is, is really an estimate. The mm -hmm. like EMS stuff, I just used, you know, past experiences. I changed, I modified it a little bit from what it had been before, but it's more of a uh, realistic guess.
Any questions on page four? Last page, page five. Right. All right, anything else? Any other questions for the group? You should have to do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a lot of work. Very good. <coughs> Dan, remind us where we are in the budget cycle. We have highway, highway. capital for the next meeting. Okay. I think after that, then we're is that it, you know? Yeah. yeah, we have five capital on December 16th, and then we're going to do a final budget on January 21st. Right. We probably will want to do something at the first January meeting. Feedback. 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 Did we, we just got the notification of the meeting. We don't have their budget yet, do we? Right. Yeah, there's a meeting next December 9th. Yeah. It looks like four um, But we haven't seen any budget numbers. Yeah. Okay. So we should, I think that's the last one. budget, that's it. We've got county tax access. I already have the county tax access and everything. All the insurances and everything. Just so, the staff. So, I mean, it's, it's there, you know. Um, you know, the parking lot is good discussion. You know, you know, just like I said, we were looking at trying to do something with that no matter what. Um, but for the most part, getting through the highway, and, you know, I know there's going to be some more discussion about the highway and equipment. And then after that, we'll be through the first cut on the budget. And that'll be you guys' decisions to start going where, what direction you want to go, mm -hmm. where you like what you don't want. Um, yeah, I think you know, it's once again, it's important for one time a year. We have to spend or how we can work it out. So, you know, so we're going to start. Right. So, if we were reconfigure this parking lot, where does that money come from? Right now, you know, we would have to put some money in the budget to do it. Um, we would have to do that in next year's budget um, so that that would give me one bunch of money that's become available to till July 1st. So, there's no way I could do it next summer. I just, you know, I wouldn't have enough time to do any engineering work or anything else that they want to do, make sure that we got right. So we really wouldn't be able to go to construction until summer of 2021. Um, there's been other opportunities to get in there as, as early as we could. Um, big projects like that, if you start in May, you get in, get to you know, out the way, that way you're going to do anything. Would it be for discussion in the highway budget? Yes. Well, actually, it's not in the highway budget, so it's not fair to put this in Kevin's budget. Okay. And it's more of a you know, maybe kind of special project kind of thing because that's out there. Um, you know, um, the, the budget that Todd put together for it kind of has everything in it. There's you, you don't have to move the sidewalk because you can see the parking lot, pave it, stripe it, and it still has a lot of parking spots. We kind of look at you know, this is. You're in, you know, do you want to do this or not? It's an issue. It's just something to think about while you're trying to plan. So. I know the other big thing that we talked about um, sidewalks for discussion during. You know, how do you guys want to do that? I mean, you know, we got the highway that will be here for the next meeting um, for the, the sidewalk machine in particular. Um, it's a hot topic every year. 50 grand doesn't go very far. No, that's. If we're talking about new sidewalk in the industrial park, if we're talking about improving current sidewalks, plus the right. maintenance and repairs need to be made, there are emergencies. So. <clears throat> I think it, it'd be helpful to, I don't know where it's appropriate to look at that, but I think that's something that needs a little further digging into um, and planning. From, from capacity point of view, when you were doing Commerce Street last year and the way we're doing it now, which cost-wise is pretty cost-effective where we have the village crew <coughs> do all prep work, we send the agreement and then we have somebody like Jim Bradley come in that specifically places the concrete. Capacity
capacity-wise, I, I would say we were at our capacity to do it like that last year. I don't think we could take it on any more on the village crew to be able to do that. So anything that you would do above and beyond what we did last year, just think in scope, is going to have to be completely contracted out. Uh, I just don't think there's the capacity. With everything else that they're doing, the cleaning, the leaves, every little project that comes up, you know, and, you know, and, and realistically this year we didn't have anything else going on because of the, the paving project in the downtown. It didn't impact them a lot. Um, but capacity-wise, your cost per what I call linear feeding, the sidewalk is going to go up because we don't have the capacity to do the demolition prep work. Do you know what the cost was on that first half of uh, any of the industrial park? Mm -hmm. what, did the, what did the private entities pay with that first sidewalk? It was right around $40,000, I think. I didn't want to have that. So. If you look under the highway tab, the first page of the is a uh, sidewalk expense for just Commerce Street. And you'll see how much it costs us out of our pocket to build to Commerce Street. That doesn't include the dice time or anything like that. And that was over $43,000. So that, that's my point. Fifty thousand. You know, we're done in one project. We're done, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think I don't know when, but I think that'd be helpful to yeah. have it bring that back to the board with sure. some. So realistically, you know, so if you take something like Congress Street, you're you're probably going to spend twice the amount of money to do the same amount. Just you know, to give you perspective on it, you start contracting everything out that the village group can do for you. Um, so your, your your cost per yeah, I think so. I don't have a full understanding of the even the priority areas, um, yeah, at least from someone else's perspective. I mean, if we were to do the one on the industrial park, that would be more the whole budget. That would be okay. that would be the one I would be more inclined to put out to private contract because there's no demolition. Right. We can continue to work in the village and the current sidewalks doing our demolition ourselves. That will save us money. Just have a private contractor to dem do demolition and reconstruction is way more expensive. So um, I, I, I would say that we could do that discussion up then. But yeah, I think that, I, that. I'd like to see just an idea of you know, our major problem areas. In, in and the past, what the board has wanted me to concentrate on was Main Street, working all the way out from Main Street. Because that's where all and are you most including of, Elmore Street in that? Yeah, Elmore, I'm here, sorry, Elmore okay. Street. Main Street, we have most of Main Street down there. Going on up Elmore Street. Um, a few years ago, when, after we did the A Street to B Street project, we had about $70,000 left over for that. And we earmarked that for that project. Um, so that would be some grant put in. Um, and not where there is a sidewalk. So that was past priorities, was, was what the board gave me to do to work Main Street and Elmore Street all the way out. Your priorities. Um, <coughs> if you look at Park Street, you know what we've tried to do for the most part is keep, you know, one side of the street, you know, a good sidewalk. Park Street, um, we have one good side, and we have one side that's almost non-existent anymore. Um, so I mean, you, know, you get off onto the side streets, and there's a lot of need for sidewalk repair out there. So it kind of goes all the way over. So. Um, So maybe at the next board meeting. Okay. Sidewalk discussion. And we can do it. That'll be good for that will be here too. Be and that's when we want to talk about the machine. Yep. <coughs> Great. All right. Next on the agenda, approve the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? You know, can you just give me a quick understanding of what the pink lines were and the double run or something or other? And never causes you. <laughs> Thank you. I, mean, I, I just wondered. I knew it was okay. I just. And I still had to note it because I didn't want you guys to say this was on this page, but now it's on this page too. So yeah. that's what it is. Where are we at? Speaking of once, as I saw Jerry Audi's bill come in, that's all storm related stuff, I assume, most of it. Yep. Where are we at dollar wise? Do we have a rough count right now as far as damage? 
materials, time, cost? Well, I mean, we have what we paid out of pocket. I mean, I don't have the figure off the top of my head, but what we're trying to do now is we have interviewed everyone and we're trying to allocate the loads of material we got from uh, Percy's pit, which was substantial, was over $105,000. And trying to to align those with what our guys said they had for material. Of course, you can imagine that does not work. Um, so Paul and I are going to really work hard on trying to, but we've got to make it so it works with Percy's bill because that's what FEMA's going to reimburse us for. Okay, so we're going to have to try to, you know, somebody might call it this, but it was really this kind of material. So we're trying to do that, and that's not easy at all. But, but we do, regardless of that, we know what we had to pay um, Jerry, we know what we had to Yeah, pay. we have we have gotten in all of the bills from subcontractors, and most of, not all of them from Percy's, because you guys just did some more stuff. To, yeah, some stuff they were just finishing up some holes. So we haven't got that last bill from Percy's, but it shouldn't be that extensive. But the one that we, the, the big one, the 105 is in that. It's, it's in that stack of bills. Jerry Audie's in that stack of bills. We can add the cost of the paving project on Stagecoach Road and all that. Yeah, exactly. Once we get the bill, we haven't got the bill from ACI yet, but right. we will be adding that, and that's a flood of really good costs. Whatever, whenever you get to it, okay. yeah. I'd like to hear what the dollar damage was we had. There you, you know, there are two dollar damages that we're going to look at what we paid out of pocket, and we're going to have our cost, our our forced labor account that goes with it, and our equipment cost too. There's really a couple different. Thing there that we'll at. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you, only the reason I'm asking that is because I want to know how far we dipped into to, uh, <coughs> unallocated funds. I want to know if our unallocated funds okay. is enough. That was not even a substantial storm. That was a good one, but that was not the worst we've seen in Vermont before. And I want to know where we're standing percentage wise, whether or not. Yeah, we, we, can, like, probably, yeah, we can come up really yeah. to that really close. All we need is ECI's bill and the last Percy bill, and we have all the others. Well, we can come up with what the 90% has to be. Even if ECI is going to vary, we're going to have to stop some more bills. We can teach it to the 90%. <coughs> because the motion is not to exceed 9,000, so you can just use that rep $9,000 and over for ECI in the worst case scenario. Does this include actual park? <coughs> Is it, FEMA won't pay for Oxbow. Mm -hmm. Oxbow was not one of the sites listed for FEMA. They, they won't pay for a washout like that. We always have to do that ourselves. Every time it's happened, if any of the events they pay, pay for it, they, they just, that's not what they'll pay for. Is it just flooding? Yeah, that was, you know, when it's, it's in a flood zone, yeah. it's, you know, if it washes out every year, um, FEMA won't reimburse us for something like that. Any further discussion on the works? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion is carried. Next, TA report. I really don't have any story that I've got. All the last week, and doing the interviews before, I really don't have any normal stuff going on. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Very good. Any questions for Dan? Select, next, uh, select board concerns. Judy? I just want to say I have a bunch of them. Congrats to Sarah for her Vermont clerk certification, an honor given to a Vermont clerk or treasurer, which you are both, for professional development and community service. And then Tammy Lurie from the, uh, did I say that name correctly? Lurie, yeah. Um, she's been nominated for the 2019, 2019 Frank Stilfes. Yes. Award for work exemplifying collaborative response to mental health crises. And um, and the email from Bill said that uh, she was nominated. The statement was, you don't get flustered or judge others. You have a unique ability to use your voice to encourage people to shower, eat, and take medications. You have the ability to ground people who are elevated or in elevated situations. Clients and staff trust you. And she's going to be honored at the State House on January 29th. 2020 between 10 and noon on that day and also kudos to Bill for um, being chosen to serve as a member at large of the Governor's Emergency Communication Advisory Council. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Steve. Brian? I just saw um, a good point. I think the town was having a very nice, the lights and the decorations up, the bridge lit up, it was nice. 
and then just like we already told us, I just wonder why that machine's not that. I just, I just, you know, it, it's been one of, the, one of those frustrating things, you know, especially for Doug. It's not like he's ignoring them. He just, they, we have not been able to get them in to get that machine repaired like they're supposed to. It's just not for lack of effort from anybody here. No. To it. I didn't think it was. No. No, some, some of the machine in late spring, early summer, mm -hmm. thinking that's our least amount of usage time for it, right. and we'd have it back, and here we are in the winter, and we still don't have it back. Mm -hmm. So this is not a reflection on our crew, it's a reflection on the companies. So probably right. people were thinking it's the crew was not doing their job. No, nope. right, that's, I correct anybody that would, would bring that right. false one up. Oh so. yeah, I do. <clears throat> okay, that's it. I think I'm all set. I just uh, would like to note that this was uh, in in Morristown's history a kind of a historic evening in that we have appointed sergeants to our police department having worked for the original chief of police the follow-up and secondary second chief of police uh, how many years we've we been in existence since 70 what one in five stars 70, 77 so 40 years 40 plus years now yeah. and uh, They've uh, put sergeants in place. I think, think it's very timely. I think our department and the needs of the community are growing in every way, shape, and form. Uh, I'm glad to see them in place, and congratulations to both of them. Great. That's it. And I'm good. Other business? Hearing none. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.